In this video, I want to talk about the statistical interpretation of quantum mechanics. This video is part of a playlist on quantum mechanics. You can find the link to this playlist in the description below. So let's start off by talking about the wave function. So the wave function is represented by the Greek letter psi. And let's write this guy. The Greek letter psi is the wave function. This is a complex valued function. So it has, uh, in some places, it might have an imaginary component. Some places, it might have a real component. It can be completely real, or it can also be completely imaginary. That's the beauty of having a complex valued function. So a complex valued function can't actually correspond to uh, things that you can measure. But you can do something to that complex valued function to give you something that is uh, physically meaningful. So this guy, for our purposes, in one dimensional motion, is just going to depend on position and time. So this x is the position, t is the time. You can generalize this to higher dimensions and have x, y, and z. You can also uh, do things to this function to write it in terms of momentum or in terms of energy. And these are uh, slightly more advanced topics which we'll get to later in this playlist. But what I want to get across in this video is how you can go from the wave function to something that can be interpreted as a probability. So what you have to do is you have to take the complex conjugate of all of the values for this function. And that's represented by psi star. And if you take psi star and you multiply it by psi, that's actually going to give you the square of the magnitude. And we can write that as psi magnitude squared. So these two uh, bars over here are just like the absolute value or the magnitude. So it's taking how big this complex value is at each point, and it's squaring it. That's what multiplying by the complex uh, conjugate does. And this thing over here, this is what we can interpret as a probability. So let's have a look at an example. Let's say we have uh, a graph. So I'll, I'll draw a little graph over here. So on this axis, the vertical axis, we're going to have uh, the probability density function. That's this guy, or the amplitude squared, square of the amplitude. Uh, and on this horizontal axis, draw the horizontal axis here, what we're going to have is the position. And the position is x. So what we can have is some kind of function that tapers off at infinity, but does some interesting stuff here in the middle, and then falls away. So it's not very interesting. Uh, for really large values of x, or really, really negative values of x. Out here, it kisses the x-axis, and out here, it kisses the x-axis as well. But in the middle, it's doing some interesting stuff. So this is essentially the probability density function. That's what this value can be interpreted as. So what does that mean? We have a probability of measuring certain outcomes. So if we take some interval, because this is a continuous function, we need to take an interval. If we take an interval, let's say starting from here, we have uh, x equals a, and then over here we have x equals b. What we can do is we can make this interval over here into something meaningful. The area under the curve, this area over here, is actually the probability of measuring the position in between the values of a and b. So the probability of, of measuring I'll write this like this, the probability of measuring an outcome of the position in between the values a and b is actually equal to the integral from a to b of this over here, which is our probability density. This guy squared dx. So this is actually the probability. This is the thing that we can have a physical meaning associated with it. So we start off with the wave function. We multiply by its complex conjugate. That gives us the square amplitude. And then that square amplitude we can interpret as the probability density function. And if we plot this probability density function, we get some curve. And then if we take an interval on the x-axis and we find the area under the curve uh, over this interval, that is the probability of measuring the particle in between here and here. 
So isn't that amazing? That is the statistical interpretation of quantum mechanics. We have a way of turning the wave function into a physically realistic value, something that corresponds to a measurement. So keep in mind that we actually don't know what value it can be. We have no idea what value it's going to be. We have no way of knowing until we do the measurement. And once we do the measurement, this wave function gets completely altered. It turns into a spike. And that's actually quite a complicated process. So until we do the measurement, the wave function, and particularly the square amplitude of the wave function, is going to give us the probability density. And if we pick a certain interval, that is actually going to give us the probability of measuring the outcome. So if you think about this, if we expand A and B, this interval, if we expand it out to take over the entire number line, we're going to be going from minus infinity to infinity. And I want you to think about what that value needs to be in order for this to be a physically realizable uh, description. So think about that, and we'll come back to that idea in the next video. So this is your homework. Think about what would happen if we moved this a value all the way towards negative infinity and this b value all the way towards positive infinity. What would happen to the area under this curve? Or what, function, uh, what, needs to be, uh, what, what condition does the function need to satisfy in order for us to have a probabilistic interpretation of this uh, probability density function? So think about that, and we'll come back to this idea in the next video. You can find uh, all of the videos in this playlist if you click over here.